Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gabe Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and with me, as always, is Vincent M. Wales. And please welcome to the show Sebastian Sloven. Now, Sebastian confuses a guy like me because he and his wife run a group called Nature Unplugged, which focuses on cultivating wellness through healthier relationships with technology and deeper connections to nature, which sounds a lot like put your phone down and go outside, which is... Completely alien to Gabe. Completely alien to Gabe. Sebastian, (laughs) welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks, and thanks for having me. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Now, uh, Vince, he is an outdoorsy guy. To a degree. I mean, you know, I don't think we're talking Sebastian levels of outdoor love, but certainly significantly above Gabe. Um, but Sebastian, you you raise very good points. I mean, nature is beautiful. It's all around us. And there is healing properties in, in taking a deep breath and uh, not being stressed out. And you have a lot to talk to us about today, but that's one of your major points, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And just to clarify, you know, I'm not anti-tech. I don't live in a a yurt on a mountaintop without Wi-Fi. Uh, You know, I'm in the city, but I think the balance has tipped pretty far on the scale of of tech overload for a lot of people. And so taking the time to intentionally unplug, get outside and breathe is, I think, always helpful. That is very true. You are on a podcast, so you can't be a complete (laughs) technology hater. Absolutely. Yeah, there's some wonderful aspects to tech, right? This episode, this podcast being one of those things. So... Tell me, Sebastian, what was it that made you come to this conclusion? Where, what happened in your life to bring you to the point of saying, you know what, we need to unplug more and, and attune with nature? I, I'm going to bring it way back to my early days. I lost my father. Uh, he died by suicide when I was young. And a lot of my memories of him are in and around the ocean. He was this incredible swimmer. After he died, it was really tough on myself and my family. And for me, uh, I think my outlet was to, uh, you know, no matter how bad things got on land, if I could get to the ocean, you know, it felt like my opportunity to reconnect with, with my dad. And, and it was and from, a, from an early age, you know, I'd say seven or eight, it was um, kind of my, my refuge. Very sorry for the loss of your father, Sebastian. And I like what you said there about, you know, trying to connect with him by doing something that that he loves. And in this case, it's, you know, the ocean and things like that. But one of the things that we're constantly talking about on a mental health show is the stigma of mental illness. Do you feel that because your father died by suicide, that this impacted your ability to grieve? Was this more difficult for you? Can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. I... I think my initial response to to losing my dad was, I think, confusion and over just overwhelm. You know, he was like this heroic figure in a lot of ways, and you know, he died at a point when I didn't see any flaws in him. And 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 after that, I was you know, so it was like losing my my hero. And I think my my response was to just try not to feel. So that you know was a lot of isolation and just trying. You know, I did everything I could to not talk about my dad or his death. And it wasn't until I got a little older that I really became aware of the stigma around suicide. And I started to notice, you know, things like, you know, whenever my dad's name came up in in family gathering or extended family gatherings, it was the subject was quickly changed. Or if suicide came up, someone would clear their throat and change the subject. And, you know, it wasn't too long before I realized for some reason, you know, this isn't okay to talk about. And that became more apparent as I got older. I never talked about my dad or his death. I didn't talk about it for many years. So I was pretty died when I was six and talk about it basically till I was 17. Wow. That's a long time. That, that had to have been a, a very uncomfortable period of your life, I would say. Yeah. I mean, it was, I think, living, you know, in the, in the shadow of his suicide. Right. There was certainly cues I got from society and people around me that it wasn't okay to talk about. And that sort of, I think, created a mindset in myself where I felt like there's something wrong with me and with my family by association. And that got to the point where I, you know, I felt sort of tied to him and destined, you know, things didn't go well for me. I felt like I was destined to go down his same path. And I can imagine that would be, you know, pretty frightening on a developing 
human. I mean, as much yeah, as we like to yeah. think we're grown up at, at, at 16, 17, 20, and, you, you know, there's... 54. 54, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of life. Now, one of the things I like that you talk about is you combine nature and mental health. Can you talk about this a little bit? Because you're not just saying, hey, let's go outside and it's magic. You're you're using it to promote wellness and have conversations, tough conversations that many people are avoiding. You know, I just want to clarify that, you know, our focus with Nature Unplugged and the work I do uh, with my wife on that is really is wellness focused. So we're, we're getting people outdoors. We're, you know, teaching you know, healthy boundaries with technology and, and incorporating things like mindfulness practice. So we're not doing therapy. Uh, I just want to clarify that. You know, this other piece that's in my background, and I recently wrote a book called Ashes in the Ocean, kind of about my journey of learning from my father's suicide. You know, that's a really important part of, I think, why I do Nature Unplugged. So I think it's so critical to especially in this day and age when we're overly connected to tech, to create some space for a number of reasons, general wellness, but also to you know create space to do things like grieve and create space for deeper questions and deeper conversations. So how long have you and your wife been doing this kind of work? So we've been doing this work for about four years. You know, my background is in, you familiar with bodyboarding, it's like boogie boarding is the same thing. Is it like surfing, just with a smaller board? Yeah, exactly. It's like it's like if you go to the beach and there's people boogie boarding. It's similar to surfing, but you're you know laying down. You have flippers on. So I got I got really into to bodyboarding or boogie boarding when I was young and ended up starting to compete. And it ended up being a, a profession for me I, after I graduated high school. I I went pro as a bodyboarder. Spent a lot of time outdoors and and doing my bodyboarding thing, traveling around, and uh, also had been really fascinated by yoga for a long time. I became a yoga instructor and I started to combine you know, yoga practice with getting people outside and into the ocean. So, you know, we do yoga practice and then surf lesson and things like that. And that evolved over the years. And, and now we're doing less teaching surfing or teaching yoga. And it's more like teaching the skills, like I said before, create the healthy boundaries with technology and get outside and, and do that kind of stuff. So if somebody were to come to your program, for example, is there a standard series of, for lack of a better term, classes, or do you personalize them for the individuals? So we do both. We do workshops that are more general, you know, information about this, and, and so workshops with individual, with groups of people, and then we also see people one on one, do one on one coaching, which will be, you know, based on the same same stuff, but we get a little bit more uh, personalized with, you know, meeting their needs and 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 uh, figuring out what works best for them. I imagine that uh, this sort of thing comes with a price tag on it, and a lot of people aren't aren't comfortable with price tags. So for somebody who doesn't have the money for such a program, what can they do? I think our intention too is to get out and you know, you know, create create a movement around this, and you know, there's other people doing this, but we're really passionate about you know getting out, going into to schools and areas where communities where people can't afford you know one on one coaching on this. I think some examples of, of things people can do are just, you know, like create a space every day, you know, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes to leave the phone behind or leave the device behind and get out. And whether that's, you know, going to a park or walking in your neighborhood or whatever aspect of nature gets you excited, get out there and, and just create a little time where you're totally unplugged and out there. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central. This is not a an uncommon thing to hear. I, I would love to tell you that you're the first person to ever say, "Hey, go outside and feel better." It's it's it's, and I don't mean that in any derogatory way. I think you, you know we we've all been on Facebook, we've all taken a walk around the block. It's it it really is good advice. In your opinion, why do you feel that nature is so essential to personal well being? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, and you know, I'll dive back into what I touched upon about my dad. And that's, that's the root of it for me. You know, when, when he passed away, it was 
a really confusing time for me and for my family. And he was cremated. We spread his ashes in the ocean. And after that moment, my relationship with the ocean changed forever. And it was, you know, again, no matter how bad things got on land, if I could just get myself to the ocean, it was like my time to be with my family. And for a long time, that was unique to my relationship with the ocean. But over time, that that relationship grew to encompass, you know, parks and other natural places. And, and so it's been, from a very young age, my go-to, my go-to place. I, I really appreciate you sharing that. And I think that that speaks to a lot of people. And e- even myself, I'm a, I'm a redheaded guy. Uh, so I always joke that if I walk past a beach poster, I will get a sunburn. So this, this may or may not have something to do with my fear of nature. But that said, I, I love the fall. I love, uh, I love watching it snow from inside the house. But there are connections to nature, even for somebody like me. I want to flip this a little bit and, and talk about technology. You know, the, the second part of your program is, is not just about getting into nature because you're saying, hey, don't, don't go to a campsite and set up you know, a wireless router and watch Netflix outside. That's, you know, going to the drive-in is not what you're talking about here. But it's also to unplug a little bit and to connect. And I, I myself, when I was reviewing the notes for your show, I thought to myself, are we just complaining about the printing press? I I mean, throughout history, all technological advancements have been met with somebody saying, oh my, this is the downfall of society. We're never going to look our families in the eyes ever again. But I know that's not what you're saying. I know myself really well, and I am not alone in the world. I know there's some people that are hearing, technology is bad, and this guy is saying, give up my phone. And as you alluded to earlier on in the show, you're not saying that at all. What do you consider to be a good balance between technology and nature? Where's that sweet spot? Yeah, and I think, I mean, awesome question. And I think that looks different to different people, right? I think this is, this is a little bit of this is, I think what we work on with folks is, you know, cultivating that awareness or, you know, mindfulness, you could call it, to, you know, understand clearly like what areas uh, where technology is helpful and really, you know, beneficial to you, like doing a podcast or, you know, educational stuff or, you know, whatever, or connecting with loved ones, you know, around the world or friends, lots of examples of that. And where is it, you know, not so helpful? And I think so a lot of, a lot of the work we do is sort of, helping folks discern that difference. Maybe binge watching Netflix for you know, a day straight is on the not so helpful side. Well, no, no, wait a minute. Wait, oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> wait, back up. You're, you're saying that binge watching Netflix for one day is bad? <laughs> I'm thinking no, of my yeah, last yeah, three entire weekends. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is relative. This is relative. So I, I, yeah, I no, do no, understand no, no. what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just yeah, like finding yeah, finding where it's where it's helpful and where it's not, and and again, yeah, I think there's you know absolutely not. I'm not anti-tech. We're not anti-tech, but I think as technology continues to develop and grow and and become more prevalent in our lives, nature is I think a wonderful counterbalance to that. I think you know the more tech, you know, it's it's important to have a bit of a balance. One of the words that I think I heard you drop earlier was mindfulness. It's a word that Gabe and I use a lot, but it's a word that a lot of people are still confused by. Could you, uh, in 25 words or less, sum it up for us? Yeah. Uh, You know, I would say paying attention, you know, with intention in the present moment and without judgment. That was amazing. That works for me. That's very, that, that, that may be verbatim or very close to the definition by John Kabat Zinn, who's sort of, you know, a guru on the topic and. A lot of different definitions, but I think they all essentially say the same thing. And we were counting your words, just so you know. (laughs) (laughs) There's always going to be people, and again, I've really decided to put on my my outside curmudgeon-y hat today, but I've also put on my, listen, basically what you're saying is that people who are sad should go outside and that will cheer up and this, this is nonsense and you're just some new age person. As much as I hate to say it, it, it's easy to mock the idea of, listen, if you feel bad, go for a walk. The first thing that I want to state unequivocally is I agree with you. I, I need to exercise more, especially now that I am 
on the other side of middle-aged. But what do you say to the person that's listening who is thinking to themselves, ah, this is some new age yoga guy. Uh, he's just, he's just trying to pass off walking as medical advice. What would you say to that person to maybe encourage them, you know, to, to get moving and explain to them that you're, you're not offering a, a simple solution to a complex problem. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great question. And, and I appreciate you bringing that up because it's really important. Even though I have this background of losing my dad and this interest in talking about, you know, the stigma around suicide and mental health, I, I view that as, you know, a piece of my, you know, it's been my inspiration for Nature Unplugged, but we're not working specifically with folks that, you know, are dealing with mental health issues. And for, for anyone who is, I would look at this as an adjunctive piece to whatever work they may be doing with a mental health professional or, you know, in addition to medication and all the things that are so uh, helpful for such a complex problem, right? So I would say this is, this is a piece that uh, I think for anyone, you know, re- you know, regardless of where you're at or what you're dealing with um, can benefit you, you know, and, and just, and I think going back to human beings, the vast majority of our time on in, on this earth have been much closer to nature and moving a, a lot more. I want to take a moment to point out that my, my co-host, Mr. Wales, loves the Redwoods. And he showed me the Red Hood, Redwoods once. And they're, they're the enormous trees in California. And I mean, they really are. You can drive cars through some of them. They're so big. Vin has talked many times, and, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit I have mocked him, um, about feeling connected to redwoods so vin this this question is actually for you to discuss with sebastian why is that because you know vin you're you're not really a spiritual guy i mean you you're kind of like me where everything sucks and that's just the way it is so that's why i agreed to go look at these things with you because you really don't speak positively about most things and and you you really (laughs) are quite fond of of this area of the country it's it's funny you ask that because i was literally just about to talk about it uh but yes now i'm an east coast guy uh grew up surrounded by trees no redwoods but lots of trees and when i moved west one of the first things that i experienced was um the redwood groves in northern california and the first time i stepped out of the car and walked into a redwood grove it was really really overwhelming in a good way uh, as as Gabe said, I'm not a spiritual person, but that was probably the closest I've ever felt to it. There was just something about being in these ancient, massive organisms that I I just was just in awe of them. And even though it's a long drive for me to get back up there to visit them, I do try to, especially when I feel that I need a recharge. That's that's what I want to do is go up there. I think what I would say to folks out there is, you know, find, you know, whatever your version of the Redwoods is. It doesn't have to be, you know, going on some huge excursion and traveling long distances. It can be sitting in your house and looking out the window and watching the rainfall or the snowfall or watching a tree or, you know, it can be quite simple. And so I think the more we can take time intentionally to to connect with nature in some way, it's going to be be beneficial. Sebastian, we are nearly out of time, but I have uh, one more thing to ask you about. Um, I know you've got the book out, and I'd like to hear a little bit about that, and also just any any last words that you have for our uh, our listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the book, again, is, is kind of, I look at it as my sort of why behind my interest in Nature Unplugged, and, and so the book is called Ashes in the Ocean, a son's story of living through and learning from his father's suicide. And, you know, it's, it's really, you know, a story about, about my dad who happened to be, he was a, he was a champion swimmer and kind of larger than life guy. And from the outside looking in, it looked like he had it all. And, and, you know, he, that wasn't the case. You know, he had a lot of stuff he, he kept inside and, you know, eventually took his own life and obviously changed my, our family dynamic quite a bit and was the beginning of a very difficult time for myself and my family. And the, and the book's really about coming to terms, you know, living in the, with the stigma and the shame of all that, and then eventually facing it and, and coming out the other side and learning from it. As I mentioned earlier in the 
we were talking that I hardly ever talked about it from age six to 17. When I was 17, I had the chance to go to Australia to do some bodyboarding. I went and stayed with one of my dad's really close friends. They sw- competed against each other, swam against each other uh, growing up and had became, remained friends after that. I didn't know it at the time, but his father, this guy's name is John David, his father also took his own life when, when John David was a boy. And the first day I was in Australia, he, we went on this long walk and he shared with me what that was like for him, what it was like not talking about it for so many years and the shame, the stigma and all that. And then, then him building up the courage to, to face it and feel it and process it. And not necessarily everything was great, but to move through it. And that was such an incredible thing for me to see someone who had been through this and was now on the other side and and facing it and talking about it. And it really inspired me to go and face it and talk to other people about my dad. And that's, I think my, my intention with the book is to do for other people what this guy, John David did for me, which is start the conversation and, and go from there. Thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate you. We're assuming the book is available on Amazon where all fine books are sold. Correct. On Amazon, you know, Barnes & Noble, all, basically all book platforms, it's there. And you can also find it on my, my website, which is SebastianSloven.com and uh, links to it on NatureUnplugged.com as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And remember, you can get one week of free, convenient, affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere by visiting BetterHelp.com slash PsychCentral. We will see everybody next week. And go for a walk. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Psych Central Show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the Internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at GabeHoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counselor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at VincentMWales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email talkback at psychcentral.com.